The graphics processing unit, or GPU, can be one of the hottest components inside of a computer. And as modern PCs have evolved, the drive to liquid cool these systems has become very pervasive. With the launch of the RTX 3000 series cards, NVIDIA has brought to market one of the most powerful and power-hungry GPUs we've ever seen. Packed with a top-of-the-line Ampere GPU and 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X video memory, it stands within reason that this card is going to pump out some serious BTUs. But with great power comes great thermal instability. Enter liquid cooling. While I need to make it clear that the process you're about to watch does in fact void warranties, if done correctly it can actually extend the life of your GPU by allowing it to run much more efficiently at lower operating temperatures and decreasing the overall ambient temperature of your entire system. In addition, it will also run silently as liquid cooling completely eliminates the onboard fans and heatsink of the GPU freeing up valuable real estate inside of your case. If you're here, it means you're probably interested in water cooling your new 3000 series GPU. And in this specific case, I'm gonna show you the complete teardown of the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Founders Edition and installation of the XG7 RGB 30 series water block from Corsair that I did live on stream. The first time you do this, you should probably account for an hour or two as it's kind of sketch. But once you do it the first time, you're going to be able to do it again in about 15 minutes if needed. Important things you'll need include a T4 Torx bit and a PH00 Phillips bit. Ideally, you'd also have some electronic picks, maybe some isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, and canned air to blow off debris. Just some things to have before you get started. If you have any questions, I do live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch, link down in the description below, or simply leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And without further ado, <laughs> let's go void a warranty. Basically. So the only other thing to do now, you got this little magnet piece right here that just kind of pops out. It has those two little stems on it. So if you never seen this before there's a magnet right here in the middle of the V you can see the little square and then there's two little stems that are right there and that pops out it looks like the screws that are inside here there's one two three four uh, baby Phillips so let's get our little tool back and make sure we use the right one So we've got these four out, we've got these four out, the SLI port is undone, and now we need to take the IO shield off. Let me make sure you guys can still see this. No, that's going to be off camera. Alright, well, you can see that there's, um, and these are larger torques. I think they're T8s. There's six of them. One, two, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So I'm going to just pop those off real quick. Yep. T8 it is. Oh, look at that. It popped right off. Nice. Okay. So I want to reserve, conserve all of this. So there's, there's the back plate off. And there's our card. Warranty voided, officially. YOLO. All right, so is that T4 as well? No, that's gonna be T5 probably. So let's get our, yeah, that's still T8. So let's get this IO shield off. So 
So there's our IO shield. Put that off to the side. And I want to put this up here out of the way. So we have no more. Now we just got to deal with cables, which everything that I've heard so far. Let me see if I can zoom this in any further. Oh yeah, that works. So this should pop up. Or is it back? I can never remember. Oh, it flipped up. So the back, the little black piece flipped up and towards the cable. So that way. And then we just give it a little pop. All right, and so I'm gonna assume same thing over here for this one. That, I, that we believe is the fan controller. Just gonna give it a little pop up, like that. And give it a nice little tug out, give it a wiggle, there we go. Now this one is supposedly the, bo the bear. So I think if I remember right, It pulls back, clicks, and then, is that it? You clicked back. Here it goes. Ta-da! So all three cables free. This is going swimmingly so far. This is uh, a lot easier than I thought it might be. Okay, so now we gotta take the the bracket off there, which is Torx. Is it T8 again? No, it looks like about T5. Oh, nope, it's bigger than that. Seven? That feels about right, but it's still a little wiggly. No, yep, that was the right one. Okay, so this one is spring-loaded and under pressure, so we're gonna back it out. Eat, we're gonna back out each of them out a little bit at a time. There we go. Now for the YOLO part, where you have to kind of give it a little bit of pressure, but considering I haven't really run the card up to temperature, and the thermal paste is probably not even cooked in yet, it's probably gonna come off pretty easily. Yeah, I can feel it coming already. Yep, pop, there it goes. Ta-da! And there is our RTX 3090. I'm gonna sit this guy right here so that I can put the pads back in the right place. Last thing we've got to do is take the. Oh, I'll zoom in. So there is the naked card. Well, we got a little. You want to do some kind of fine cleaning here as well, because you'll see this putty has some kind of resin strands that come with it, almost like fabric that comes. See, I, I just I want to get all these out of here. out the little dusty pieces. All right. NVIDIA. There we go. All right. Let's get our water block out. Sit this guy off to the side. All right. 
So in the kit from Corsair comes with the, the water block assembly and Drew, here's your thermal pads lined up in place without me having to cut anything to length, without having to do anything really. There's little, you have to pull a piece of plastic off uh, that's covering it and you'll pull this whole like plastic assembly off right there. It's covering the, uh, the die. Uh, but that's it. Let's put that there. Get our back plate out. All right, so we've got a bag of stuff here. Comes with two plugs. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven baby screws. A lot of people ask what this is for. That comes with a lot of the um, Corsair stuff, and it's for your plugs, right? So you, it's almost like a guitar pick. And instead of using an actual screwdriver metal on plastic that'll just tear it up, you simply put that in there and you screw your plugs in and out, right? Which I'm, I'm as guilty of as anybody. Okay. So if we look around, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Am I missing one? So remove the Tim protective cover and place the XG7 water block on a suitable smooth surface with aesthetic cover and acrylic glass facing down. Oh, face down. That's how I've got it right now. Okay. Uh, place it so that the front of the water block slightly overhangs the box as shown in the image. Oh, yeah, we don't need to do that. Is that so that we... Oh, because they're, they're telling you not to take the IO shield off. So that's interesting. Because it has that one screw hole, let's just see how this sits on there. So to give you an idea, that's the difference. Actually, it's not even lined up right. There you go. That's a big difference. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Alrighty. So now, I wanna see how this lines up. Okay. So what I'm trying to look at right now is how all of the stuff lines up. The thermal pads specifically. Okay, everything lines up really nice. So you can see this slot right here is is where the the power adapter that comes off the card at an angle is going to slot right in there. Okay, so it's going to be upside down like this. And then the IO shield is going to be like this. See, okay. Let me do a little bit more wipies here, just to get this really clean. Let me get all this excess out of here. And I think it has, it does have its own thermal paste. So I'm going to, I'm gonna lean on that for right now. Normally I would wipe that thermal paste off and put my own on. This is uh, kind of out of practice for me, but considering this is the first time I've ever really torn down a big graphics card like this, we'll see. Okay, so we pop this off. It's just snapped into place over the top of the GPU cover. And then we're going to get our little pick tool and we're gonna 
See, these are white and these are blue. It makes me feel like there's protected film on it. But no, apparently not. Nope. Okay. Make sure all our holes are lined up and then give it a good little little press to seat that uh, thermal compound. And then what I want to make sure of is that I get this lined up the right way. <coughs> I am going to need to hang it off the edge a little bit like it was describing. So that we can, because we, we've got to put the IO shield on before we put the back plate on. So, uh, no, 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 no. Throw a little screws in. in for lineup. Oh, yeah, I gotta take my thermal stickers off. Now that I'm com pot committed, everything's lined up. Good. And we'll take our little sticker tabs off. So see, Drew, this is all it is, really. You're just pulling a little piece of plastic film off the top. Now the trick is, you've really got to land the plane properly uh, when you seat it. Because you don't want to move this around a lot. Because it'll like smear kind of the, it'll stretch the pads in the ways that you don't want to. So now that all the film is off, it's exposed. Make sure all the holes are lined up. They are. And I'm sorry it's a little off camera. I've got to hang it off the edge in order to deal with the IO shield for right now. Everything's lined up. And before I give that a good tightening, I'm gonna see about getting this IO shield on. The good news is it looks like I can put the IO shield on after. So let me do that last. Well, that's all four of those. Okay, I think that's all of the ones that require that. All right, so what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Do I have five left? Am I missing a screw? Did I knock one off the table? Now I gotta figure out how to get the IO shield on, so bear with me one second. And then we'll tighten everything down. IO shield is on. I'm gonna sit a box under it so that it can let the IO shield hang off the side. And we're gonna go around and tighten her up. So I'm gonna give it one last good little, little press. And tighten everything to just snugness. We can manipulate the card now and throw it around. And I'm looking through for light. I see no light other than I see no light where I shouldn't see light and that's a good sign so good solid snug fit let's uh, start in the middle good little 10 to 15 pounds pound feet of torque maybe a quarter turn from snug 
Most of them are already good to go. Any more than where I'm about at right now and it's gonna start potentially stripping the screws and don't wanna do that. I gotta say guys, on a difficulty level, three out of 10, that was really easy. I did it in, I mean, maybe an hour. I probably could have gone faster. The second time I do this, I could probably do it in 15 minutes. That's the crazy part. So what I, I guess what I wanted people to see out of this was that it's totally doable. Um, there's not a lot of risk other than of course getting your components wet. That's always a risk. Leaks are always a risk. But that kind of comes with the territory when you're dealing with um, water cooling. You could have a leak that fries your whole system. So there we go. Corsair water block installed on a 3090. We'll have a full breakdown video of the full liquid cooled build project coming very soon as you can see it back here. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. If you have any questions about a particular step of tearing down the car to installing the water block, please drop those down in the comments below. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you next time. Take care.